Hi, everybody. Welcome to Conversations with Calvin, We the Species. Uh, and I always love to be chronological. This is November 3rd. And uh, it's um, in the afternoon, and I'm with Nam Hulse. And, and Nam and I go back a ways uh, to when Nam was a, a guest on our NJ Discover TV show a couple of years ago uh, with Zara. And, and the theme of that show was uh, about adoption. Uh, and it was probably one of the more poignant, meaningful, and, and something that was very close to my heart. Uh, and I, you know what? I don't even remember uh, how we met. You can tell me in a minute. Uh, so this uh, second time I get a chance to chat with Nam and talk about her life and especially uh, her documentary, which we'll talk about momentarily, found in Korea which I, I watched and, and um, but anyway, I, I want uh, in this little Johnny Carson monologue before I, I officially uh, introduce Nam uh, uh, is to give you the title uh, of this, uh, which we just hammered out. Um, uh, found in Korea, uh, she's the producer and director of this documentary. She's an adoptee. Uh, she's now a psychotherapist and a counselor and does child trauma. Uh, and uh, particularly for me, uh, uh, she's a former Broadway actress uh, and a dancer and a recent graduate with an MSW from Hunter College. And did I get it right? Yes, yes thank you, Calvin. Well, good. And why don't you, uh, so that, that's my Johnny Cusson monologue that, that by uh, being here uh, in, 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 in doing our second uh, showing uh, with you means a lot to me uh, for just so many reasons. So I'm so glad you're here uh, and you've made the time to do this. So um, how about a little, a little quick bio? And we'll Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, thrilled to be here and to be able to connect with you and your audience, which is growing, growing, growing. <laughs> and um, so thank you for having me here. A little bit, little bio. Uh, as you mentioned, I am a Korean adoptee. I was adopted in infancy from Korea. I was adopted by a white family and raised in the suburbs of Chicago. Um, grew up doing dance, playing the trumpet, singing, acting, um, not very many other Asians around. Um, you know, it was in the 80s, 90s, um, earlier in the, the international adoption scene, but not the earliest. Um, <clears throat> and I went to school for dance at SUNY Purchase, and I got a BFA in dance. And I ended up um, performing on Broadway in The King and I. Um, if anyone knows anything about Broadway, I was a swing. So I covered 14 dancer singer tracks, which is a lot. And um, I got to go to London with the show. And um, I also did some touring with Miss Saigon and Flower Drum Song. And I did the Vegas show, of We Will Rock You. Um, so I had a nice career in musical theater. And then um, I started working on my documentary, which led me into the adoption world and adoption advocacy, adoption awareness. Um, I did some mentorship programs. I was a facilitator for a teen mentorship program in Brooklyn, and that led me back to school. So then I went to school and graduated, and now I'm here. I made my film. Yeah, now I'm here. Lots of stuff. It's been, okay. it's been a, quite a trip. Yeah, quite a trip, by the way quite a trip it's that in itself excluding the founding career i mean that your whole journey and what you've accomplished and where you're at now which we'll get to shortly uh it's a fascinating it's a fascinating journey so um you did get your bfa from uh by the way how did you um 
So you're, you're in Chicago. Uh, how did you wind your way into New York? Uh, you, no, you I applied got a to at purchase, at purchase, right? I did. I did. I applied to nine schools first college, which is kind of a lot. Um, and some of them were not just for dance only. Some of them were for musical theater. I actually considered um, going to school for trumpet too, because I was very serious. I was a very wow. serious trumpet player at the time, but it ended up being dance that I focused on and it ended up being purchase because I wanted to be near New York City. I love New York City, which is where I live now. And um, there was a big pull. So it's, you know, it's a 40 minutes away and public transportation. So it was an easy scoot. I spent a lot of weekends there. And um, I think that's that was really one of the main reasons that the teachers were all New York dancers, you know, so it was, it was, a, it made sense to me. You know, it's funny. I, I, you know, you're, you're Broadway and you're, you're dancing. This is off topic, but, you know, watching Bob Forsey and his, um, his, his bio pic, uh, what you did was so intense. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, Broadway dance uh, and the acting so intense and and the training and all of that, it's like a wow. But anyway, um, just a, a thought that popped into my head. So your, your story uh, of adoption um, uh, begins with your birth uh, in, in Korea and um, there's so much to unpack about this. And I want to tell folks that uh, I, I did watch in my six pages of notes, I, I did watch Found in Korea. Uh, and, and I told mom before we went on air, I'm going to watch it again and again, because it's, it's just a magnificent, beautiful, poignant, sensitive, uh, interesting, fascinating, documentary. Uh, so, so many questions I want to answer about that. Uh, uh, how did this, how, where did the energy and how did this come about to do, undertake this huge um, project? It's a great question. Well, first of all, going into it, I didn't know it was going to take this much energy. <laughs> so that's one thing. But when I, um, I had the pleasure and privilege of helping my sister Amy through labor and to give birth to my niece. And I have to tell you, I, that experience just really um, just had so much impact on me because I, I recognized, you know, I walked around for a few days in this days of just, you know, after seeing a birth, I, I was, I was like, everyone's born. Everyone is born. You were born. This person watching is born. You were born. I was born. So I kind of was this like dazed and I really started thinking about the circumstances around my own birth, which were completely unknown to me. So I was wondering who who cut my umbilical cord. I wrote a poem called Who Cut My Umbilical Cord. It got published in an adoptee anthology called Flip the Script. And then, so I, I, I started really thinking about it. I was in an acting class at the time and my acting teacher really encouraged me to keep delving into this story and maybe consider doing a documentary. So I credit mm -hmm. some of that to him. Um, so I did it. That was the birth of, 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 I knew I wanted to go back to Korea for a, a little while before then, but I didn't know how, I didn't know when, I didn't know what was going to be. And so he kind of helped me. Um, and other people did too. And I would talk mm -hmm. to with my friends and family and everyone was you know, on board with this idea. So that was kind of the beginning. You said everybody was, was on board with, um, I, I uh, with my background, as you know, in, in the world of adoption, which has forever magnificently changed my life. Uh, uh, um, what was the reaction um, as you were undertaking this of, of your adoptive parents? I love that you asked that question, Calvin. Um, 
I, my parents, my adoptive parents were extremely supportive. They were emotionally supportive. They were, as they could, they were financially supportive. Um, they asked questions. They asked, how can we be more supportive? Mm -hmm. um, and I know from experience, when adopted people want to do a search and explore their, their origins, that is not always the reaction of adopted parents. So I, I felt... Um, really understood and seen that they that they were able to see that this was important to me and that they were they were not scared they were not threatened they were not frightened they they understood and that meant the world to me and i i think that's one of the reasons why um the film is so important to me is because it's also can be a learning tool about how adoptive parents can work through some of those fears or, or you know and really understand how much of a support they can be for their children and how important that is to their children. So they really are shining beacons of support and love and understanding, uh, uh, which they is have. A great. Yeah, which is a great, it's a great takeaway. And it's a great message. It is. And, and you know, they've been, they've been open to the hard conversations for as long as I can remember. And they still are, you know, they, we still talk about adoption to this day. And it's just getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And I, I know that that's not always the case. I, I know that. So um, for people who are hearing it and wish they had that, I'm sorry. And I, I would support you and them finding ways to have those conversations because the it, it really is fruitful when you can. And when everyone is kind of going towards the same, you know, we want a positive outcome from these difficult conversations. That's what, what the goal is. Right. You know, uh, having been there, uh, and since I'm older, but the whole uh, adoption experience, understanding it, uh, it, uh, it morphs into different shapes and emotions as you get. So, uh, uh, it, does. Uh, it does, and and you it, you keep redefining. Um, I'm I'm I guess I'm speaking in vagaries, um, uh, but uh, um, well, with the birth of my my granddaughter, uh, it, it, it's a whole new light. It's like 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 a like a premiere of a Broadway. You know, all the, the lights and and that's all the different lights of. Uh, 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 understanding and and, and uh, appreciation, gratitude, all of that. So, but anyway, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I get so emotional uh, talking to you because um, I relate uh, and understand as best I can, uh, and it's it's kind of special. Um, uh, in the process, in 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 all of this process, you you wrote. Uh, notes to your uh, uh, to your birth mother and your birth father. What was that about? Yes. Um, so often, I've never met them, uh, obviously. Right. At this point. Often, so oftentimes, when when you contact um, your adoption agency and you say I'm embarking on a birth search, they recommend writing a letter to your family of origin. And um, so I, I did so, you know, so they could have it in the file. They can translate it if they, if they find something and they can send it along. So I did so, and it was quite an exercise. I mean, if you can, if you can thought, like imagine doing that, imagine putting yourself in that situation. Imagine never having met your birth family and then oh. writing them a letter kind of introducing yourself it's daunting it's um it's it's intense and it, it took me quite a while um to even put pen to paper and then you know to edit upon edit on edit but um I did and it's in the film so you can see it and um you know I feel like if I wrote it today things would be different I would write different things because I'm I'm in a different place now but I, I was proud of the letter then um 
and it, it was it, it took some guts to write it so anyone who's searching and writing this letter bravo yeah wow kudos to you um i, I support you <laughs> the birth of found in korea big open question how did this all come about and, and the steps and uh, well where so, did the idea come from well i i think we talked about this a little bit when when i talked about the birth of my 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 niece yes, um, and then yes, documenting yes. it that that kind of all came around then and then doing it was another matter i had two crowdfunder uh, crowdfundings. I had, you know, I had to raise money for equipment, for travel, for things that I didn't know I needed it for yet. <laughs> I put in way too much of my own money as when I was waiting tables and, you know, like I, I did it and it took me nine years to make this film. Wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> it took me nine years wow. to make it, Calvin. It was, it was like wow. an endeavor of, of, you know, Wow. We're, we were talking about doing things little by little and plugging on just right before this we started recording. And that that's exactly what this film is about to me. And I just kept persevering. I kept honing it. It it took forever for very, very, very many reasons. I mean, there was like 60 hours of footage and then the editing process and then I actually switched editors at one point and then um the translation and I, it, there was just so much you know wow. and um uh it, it i learned so much and now i can produce a film now i know what to do i know how to do it i didn't know when i went in <laughs> it's probably a good thing i didn't know <laughs> probably wouldn't have done it if i had known but anyways nine years the fruits of my labor <laughs> you have seen <laughs> well, i have seen and, and i have to interject uh i'm a big movie person and in my life is movies, and, um, uh, and I call it as I see it. But uh, what a wonderful, illuminating, sensitive, emotional tear. You know, you got tears floating around. What a wonderful job. Thank you. You did on that. And like I said, I don't, I don't watch things usually more than once, but uh, I, I have to come back to that. And, and, yeah. and just watch it again. What a beautiful, and you know, sometimes I go crazy because it, it should be seen by so, there's a million messages there above and beyond uh, um, uh, that you can, your take away from that. Uh, so it should be seen. And, and of course, on the bottom of the screen will be all the information for folks to, to, to watch it, be able to watch it. Uh, um, Thank you, Calvin. Like I said, I have all these notes and we'll kind of, <laughs> um, so, um, uh, what we, as you are starting out, to, as you're starting out this project to, to do this, uh, uh, did you have any kind of specific goals that mm. were in mind? Well, I think the main goals in my brain when I was traveling to Korea were literally goals that I could actually meet like I, I want I wanted to go to the places that I knew I was from that I had been in those were the th those were the main that was physically let's go to those places and as close to the places as we can find because Korea has undergone a massive reconstruction you know since the 70s everything's different all the addresses are different everything's different everything's been built over and so um I just wanted to get as close as I could to physical places that I had been, feel the energy, um, look around, you know, and that was something that I knew I wouldn't be disappointed because I knew that I could get to a vicinity and even being in a city and sensing the pulse of that city and seeing, you know, that, that in itself was going to be a lot of information for me to take in. So that, those were some of my main expectations and I, I kind of set the bar expectation wise pretty low so I wouldn't experience a lot of disappointments um 
because I don't, I, I didn't know how emotional I would be when I was there. And I didn't want to set myself up for a lot of disappointments. Um, of course, I planned to do a meeting with my adoption agency. And so I was open to see where that, that led. Holt, I, I didn't, right? Holt. Holt, Holt adoption agency. Yes. Yes. Very close to my last name, which is confusing. Yeah. By the way, that's <laughs> kind of, um, you know, that's kind of interesting. I didn't realize it as you're saying it now, it really is. It's, yeah. It's just a Z away. It is. Yeah. Yes. That was a, kid that was super confusing just i think i touched on it in the documentary but yeah it it always was also also one of my best friends the neighbors were named their last names were foster so i i had thought that i stayed with them when i was a kid because i you know kids don't understand you know i was stayed in foster family so i was like oh i stayed with the fosters just that's just it gives you an insight into some kid mind yeah. world because kid you know it's an innocent misunderstanding you stayed with the you were you were in a foster family oh i stayed with the foster you know like it, it just i think it's funny to to bring attention to those types of things that kids think and then only later in life it's discovered that that's what i believe mm -hmm. you know it's kind of cute kind of sad you know all that stuff you said um, and this moved me that it, it just meant something for you even to stand in the relative vicinity of something that was important. So there was a scene in Found in Korea where you're standing underneath a six lane highway mm -hmm. uh, and you felt something because there's where you used to be. And, and by the way, I'm a, I'm a big fan of of absorbing energies, which we don't really understand. I once flew down on a whim, uh, and you're, you're a theatrical person. I once flew down on a whim, I hopped on a plane, flew down to Florida, and I found the little dock where Bogart and Bacall stood in the movie Key Largo, which was made in 1949, 50. And I took my shoes off. There was still a little hunk of wood left of the dock where Bogart and the call stood. And I took my shoes and socks off and I put my feet on that to absorb uh, energy. So when you said you stood underneath the six lane highway, I thought of that. Mm. See, I love that you're sharing that you did that and that you related. Yeah. Because there's so many yes. things like moments that even though if you're not an adopted person like that that really resonated with you for various reasons yeah um and so i think that there's something for everyone in this film i really do it's a lot of identity stuff it's a lot of introspective reasoning that goes on in your head as you watch i think so yeah i really appreciate you sharing that story no yeah because i identified so much when you said that, it was like, boom. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, we've been a tad uh, on the heavy side, <laughs> uh, just a tad. So I'm going to go a little off heaviness, and, and I want to ask you this burning question. Um, uh, could you talk about the food in Korea and how and when and why you finally uh, ate fish? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so I love Korean food. Uh, you know, that makes sense, I think. Um, but there is a funny story about actually specifically fish. I Growing up, I... Eh, no fish. No fish. No fish. No fish. Growing nothing up, out of I Lake would, Michigan. Nothing. No, no. Eh, nothing. No fish growing up. I, I didn't eat fish wow. until I was 30. Wow. I know. And then I was like in, but I, for some reason, I just, it's, it, it was like a juke, full, full 180. Um, and I, I'm not exactly sure why. I think maybe I just started eating really good quality fish, I guess. <laughs> but um, I, I didn't eat fish and now I do. And I didn't eat a lot of things that, that I, I was a very picky eater growing up. 
sometimes I wouldn't go to over to friends' houses if if they weren't having what I wanted for lunch. So <laughs> um, now I'm I'm a pretty adventurous eater. Um, eating the food in Korea was a joy, and I dream about it. And I I'm so grateful that I live in New York City where I can get pretty authentic Korean food. Um, it's not easy to get all across America, so I I'm. Believe me, I'm. I, I'll, I'll be down to eat Korean food anytime, anywhere, with <laughs> anytime anyone wants to go to Korean food. I'll, yes, I'm down. So I learned a lot. I was daunted because I didn't really know how to eat some of it. There's a way, you know. I learned, um, and I, I, I'm still learning. Let's just put it that way. It's a great. It's a great way into learning about culture, food in general. Sure. So I, I say that to people if they're going to travel back to their country of origin, um, spend some time. If you don't have the restaurants and, you know, the vicinity, spend some time on YouTube. Take sure. a peek, you That's know, great. you can learn a lot. And it, it, it is daunting when you look like you should know how to eat it and you don't know how to eat it. It's confusing. So um, spend a little time. But yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I was adventurous and I, wow, I was making my mouth water thinking about it. You did eat something. Uh, there was a fresh catch and you were at the, the dock and you did eat something kind of raw. Um, the squid. I ate a squid. It had, it was flash boiled. Like literally they, yes, dumped, I they, saw dipped, that. Yeah. they dipped it in boiling seawater. So it was salty. And then I literally took it. It was hot and it just, popped it in my mouth and it was like one of the most delicious wow. breakfasts ever <laughs> wow. and i wouldn't have done that when i before i was 30 there's okay. no way no okay. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's um it's interesting for me uh, the other thing about there was a lot of things about the, the movie um it helped me learn about the culture uh, of Korea and and one of my which kind of blew me away and, and people should hear this um I keep getting these pop-ups here pardon me I don't want them to come out but uh learning about for me uh you know a Jersey guy uh, who's never left the state of New Jersey basically to learn about the, the culture of, of Korea and, and my cousin was married to a Korean girl so I learned something then but um, uh, I, I loved uh, uh, in my notes. Um, uh, people should know the the literacy rate is ninety seven point nine percent, and that's just a uh, culturally. It's like wow, uh, you know. And living here in South Jersey and, and the other side of the world, you you know you have ex you have expectations or stereotypes but uh that's just very impressive um yeah I, really. I don't know a lot about the history and i'm probably going to get some of this wrong but um from what i know is that a, a king i think his name was king sejong I, i'm probably saying it wrong anyways he was a king that wanted to create language for the people so he made the alpha he developed the korean alphabet and it's it's yeah. actually if you learn any of the characters it's like the shape of the character in your mouth like mm, is like this like wow. so yeah so he developed a very um learnable alphabet and and wanted everyone to be able to, wow. to speak to read it and and i think that he's the reason why that is wow. the literacy so that, rate. Wow, that's wow that's how that history so interesting. I think, you know, I wouldn't quote me. Off. Well, it <laughs> sounds pretty good to I me. <laughs> uh, it sounds pretty good to me. Uh, cool. As you were beginning the project, without giving anything away, um, were, were there expectations of, of finding your, your birth parents? You know, I think I always, you, you wouldn't, try if you didn't have some sort of hope okay okay right i think okay that's good uh uh watching the film there was some for me 
there were some wonderful characters and, and people you met, and I'll throw up a couple of names. If there's a few words. Um, I, um, the fellow adoptee you met in Seoul, uh, uh, Todd Davis, I think I wrote his mm -hmm. name. Todd Davis, uh, I thought he was delightful. Um, Absolutely delightful. Now you met him there? there? Yes, we connected, you know, this is the power of social media. We connected on social media and he found out about my documentary and agreed to be interviewed and, you know, he was living there. So oh. I was like, perfect. So um, met him, met him there. He was awesome. He was open, shared his story. I love hearing other adoptees stories. It's so important. We don't hear it enough. Uh, so yeah, he he was great. I love meeting him. Still in contact with him. You know, okay. it's great. Okay. Uh, and then there was a great journalist uh, who uh, who helped you so much. Oh. You know, navigate uh, Jung. Jung. Um, uh, Can't say course, enough thanks to Jung. <laughs> I, uh, me being a, a little bit of a journalist, I identified, you know, with his character and what he did for you. He did even more than you saw on screen. I'll just put it that way. Like sure. he, he, he had me in his office looking through pictures, you know, like it, it, he, he just went above and beyond. I just, you know, thanks to okay. John. Yeah. And then the other uh, interesting character that resonated with me was the mayor. <laughs> the mayor's great. Hay. So great. Yeah. Um, what a thrill. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in his position, and 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 he took the time out. Uh, um, so an interesting. And, and these are, you know, to me, they're dy they're dynamic characters, uh, and and they're real, and, and that's that's also part of the essence of found in Korea, the the reality uh, uh, of your journey of your story. I mean, by the way, it could have easily been you know, fiction. And it would have worked. Uh, but it's even... not. <laughs> um, it's not, you know, I, I, I love that you picked Mr. The, the mayor as well. Um, and I also, I also have, you know, Mrs. Moon. Yeah, you know, yeah. Another person. But that, you know, I was afraid, I was afraid that Koreans would be kind of mean because there's a, there's a lot of very big stigma about adopted people in Korea. So I was really nervous that they wouldn't want to talk to me. They wouldn't want to help me. But it was it was so I didn't have the experience, and I know some people do have that experience. And I'm it's, it's a very warm. real reality. These people could not have been more helpful. And you know, yeah. some people ask, is it because you had cameras rolling? I sincerely didn't feel that's the reason why these people helped me. I feel it. Like I felt. I mean, they interrupted their lives to to do something that was not necessary. Right. Right. Um, and they really did. They really did. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, moving along uh, to the technical. This is quite a technical undertaking. The, the technical side, you know, how much, well, I know it was nine years. Uh, <laughs> by the way, I, I meant to uh, ask you, you, you had to go to Korea uh, how many times to, to do this? I filmed, we filmed in one fell. That was weeks. one shot. Through, yeah, we were there on the ground for uh, three weeks. Wow. Mm -hmm. So all the work and the prep and, and I would think with, but that was one wow. We so also did... shot in Connecticut, New York, and Minneapolis, okay. Minnesota. Uh, we didn't use all the footage from all those places, but we, you know, we shot over the course of three about weeks. two years, okay. those, those four locations. Okay. Um, Okay. Um, just to remind people how they can, uh, I'll have down here, but it's on Vimeo. It's on Vimeo on demand, finally, after a really awesome, successful film festival run in which we garnered a lot of awards, which I was surprised and like very grateful for. Um, so yeah, the film is on Vimeo on demand and um, you can rent it. And I also offer screenings, you know, if people are interested in having a group, you could contact me and I can do a group and like a Q&A if people, you know, have 
groups together um because that's part of the learning okay. um of it and and i'm also hoping well i think we were going to talk about this later or let's talk about it now because <laughs> i'm currently translating the film into korean yes um yeah. and it's happening it's it's in the process which is another technical aspect it's taking forever but it's happening and i'm really excited about it and then um i want to develop a discussion guide about how to speak more about the film and so that will probably be my next okay you know dig in okay um so we, we've covered uh this part of your life there's an old there was an old tv show before your time, called This Is Your Life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you may have heard about it. Uh, uh -huh. and, and, but when I'm talking about the 50s here, so I'm really dating <laughs> myself. It was a great TV show, This Is Your Life. So this is your life. Uh, so uh, all this done, and, and then you do something to me, which is quite amazing. Uh, you go back to school. So can you talk about that part of your life? You went back for an MS, a W. Mm -hmm. I did. So I talked a little bit that I did a, um, a mentorship group for transracial adoptee teens. And well, it was, I meant, I was a facilitator and they mentored youth that were five to 10, age five to 10. It was a group in Brooklyn. And um, I was getting more and more involved in the adoption world. Like I was going to conferences. I had written that um poem it was you know I, so I was getting more and more into um learning about the issues that a lot of people don't talk about um having to do with adoption and one of them is mental health um support and I felt a large um desire to go back to school and get professional training so I can further support this group Wow. So I did, and I went back and I went into, I got, I went to Silverman School of Social Work at Hunter College and um, had a good experience. It was very challenging, especially as an older human to go back to school, um, lots of new things to learn, lots of apps to deal with. <laughs> and um, I, uh, I got into um, the child trauma program, which was a very competitive program at the school. And um, was able to um, further learn about specifically child trauma and make the correlation between child trauma and adoption, which is, it's, it's a missing link right now in the mental health fields. Um, but, you know, we're trying to get that more made, of, more talked about so people yeah. are more aware of it. And so now I'm supporting um, transracially adopted people, youth and adults and families um, clinically. Wow. Uh, you know, I take my hat off to you uh, um, and, and the whole, because of my background, where I'm at, how I appreciate what you're doing mm -hmm. uh, in, in that. And there's so much that has to be done uh, there. Um, and, and we, gosh, we can, we will, we can go off into so many different tangents and topics and the things that I've learned about my adoption uh, experience and, and you know listening to you and um, anyway um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, and you you do private practice now with the transracial um, uh, so you, you're in private practice with that and there must be a, a, a fair amount uh, and um, it would appear that transracial would need, even need more support and understanding and guidance and navigating the highways of life just in general. Transracial adoption adds an entirely extra layer of identity work. A lot of work to kind of make it smooth for them um and you know you and there's probably a million questions i can ask about that but not 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 for now um so uh your comments this uh and and 
uh, I, uh, I looked this word up before we went on air. It's quite propitious that uh, it's a great word um, that, that we're doing this interview uh, because November is National Adoption Awareness Month. It is. It is. And its initials are NAAM, which is close to your initials, which I just I know, realized. It's, it's weird to see that all over the place. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and of course, I hope to get this will be up in, in a matter of days for people to, in your message. Uh, in, in the last, um, uh, well, actually, there is a, a, an off topic question. Um, I don't know if I asked this to you when we were on. TV years ago, but uh, it, it is off topic. It's only a one word answer. But um, uh, living or dead, excluding family or friends, somebody you'd like to spend a day with. <laughs> you did ask this question. I did, didn't I? You did. You did. I probably you did, did because I love this question. And it, to me, it's just a provocative. Um. So excluding family of origin as well. No, yeah. you, you well, can let, make So up. let's say excluding family of origin okay. for the sake okay. of the question. Um, I, I, because that the answer is very obvious, but. I'm, I'm going to say Bruce Lee. Okay. Great. He, he was, you know. Yeah. Pioneer in many ways. But I want to, I want to say one thing about national adoption awareness this month. Yes. A couple things, actually, because that's I just really am so grateful that you're having me on this conversations with Calvin this month, because part of the month is about giving the narrative back to adoptees and listening to adoptee stories and adoptee voices. And so you are participating in a national adoption awareness month in the way that many adopted people desire it to be. So thank you for that. Um, and and I also just want to point out that um, one of my platforms is um, adoptee uh, citizenship awareness. And, and many people do not know this, but there is a loophole in the history of international adoption where there's a certain, from a certain time to a certain time, it adoptees coming in from other countries did not get automatic citizenship. So there are tons of adoptees that were adopted internationally that are without citizenship and they wow. don't even know it. I, just in the other day, I was in a meeting that, that they said that 10% of Korean adoptees are without citizenship. That is a huge yeah. amount. So yeah. I'm, I'm saying this is my plea. This is one of the platforms that I really care about. Um, you can do something about it. There is um, the Adoptee Citizenship Act, uh, H.R. 1593. Which I'm going to write down. That you can um, ask your legislators to support. It, it has bipartisan support right now. It where is it? Is it in committee? Is it, is it, is it, where is it's it located? It's going to Congress right now. So... The, again, I'll say it again, Adoptee Citizenship Act, H.R. 1593. This is the, I think, third iteration, and I can't believe it hasn't been passed before. But anyways, yeah. um, it's a big deal. It's a big deal in the adoptee community. Yeah. It's something that so many people aren't aware of. So um, that is one of my pleas is no matter where you are, it can be supported by whomever you support. <laughs> Write it down, and, and I will include that in how we promote this. So, thank um, you. Uh, this uh, there was a great movie uh, that Neil Simon wrote, Chapter Two. Um, uh, it was a great movie. I, I like Neil Simon's writings. So this actually has been Chapter Two for us. Yes, it has. Uh, and and actually, you know, I gotta go find. Uh, I'll, I'll include uh, probably a link to our TV show. People can go back and watch oh my that. Gosh. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I have that somewhere. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is chapter two. Chapter three is uh, whenever you'd love to come back. Uh, in, awesome. Uh, when maybe when you finish the translation, uh, we can talk about that. I mean, uh, so please come back. Thank you, Calvin. Because you are. Uh, 
uh, so delightful and insightful uh, uh, and and you know we bonded and we have uh, there's a lot of matrices that we share in common and that's a powerful but oh, it's a powerful um, you know adoption is powerful in whatever shape way or form that you're involved in, in, and it's a wonderful thing and, and it's also part of my second novel. You'll read about my wonderful feelings about it and about my journey uh, to become uh, a father. Um, mm. uh, it, it's powerful. Adoption is, it is, it can have many wonderful things. And one of my other platforms is that it, it has wonderful things and it has loss and you can have both of those things together. Yeah. That is, that's a really powerful takeaway from, um, everything that we talk about and I you know I think in life there you can have one thing and there's good and bad positive negative plus minus in the same thing and I think that you know talking about the loss and acknowledging the loss is preventative for some of the mental health issues that come later so that's why I like to say let's honor every let's honor it all well, you bet uh, mm -hmm. so I'm inviting you back and, <laughs> and I you. cannot thank you enough again for your time and your graciousness thank you for having me um, and and um I, I can't wait to get this up uh it's <laughs> such a timely thing uh, yes. uh get this up on youtube and and for people to see so thank you so much nam thank you okay you be well